Hi everyone. I hope all you guys are doing well and doing good. And today we are going to talk about user mailbox versus a shared mailbox and to be walking to be able to walk you through with this specific uh, video uh, I'll let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Rizwan and I am one of the senior consultants working with Alif Consulting and let's get started with our video so wherein we can just broadly discuss with with these two specific topics which comes under the mailbox umbrella so in our initial videos i have already uh, explained on what exactly you mean by a mailbox where a mailbox is simply a component or a container where emails are stored contacts are stored tasks are stored your meetings get stored and this this is the primary or the uh, most important criteria of a mailbox that we get or avail these features on an on-prem side by purchasing some storage or in cloud environment by purchasing a license so that we get a storage a cloud storage which 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 is provisioned in cloud somewhere somewhere not in our premises so talking about office 365 mailboxes yes we have a user mailbox and a shared mailbox unlike with these two mailboxes we have discussed earlier already about equipment mailbox room mailbox but the those features are somehow different from a user mailbox and a shared mailbox now why shared mailbox is important and necessary so whichever employee which works with your organization is actually a separate entity for your organization so that separate entity uh, should be having its own identification and for that person to be able to receive in emails we provide him with a specific a unique email address which sits on a mailbox where he is supposed to receive and send emails so what that purpose is yes we would require a user mailbox to be assigned in to an entity who would be working independently and separately so yes a mailbox within office 365 specifically a user mailbox would be the one who would be getting in two things automatically getting and created for himself that is his username and his password these things are meant for authorization and validation purposes unless the authorization happens with the help of authentication the user would not be able to authenticate as if what all services access the person has with the help of authorization so that the person gets an access and when the person when the person gets access so he or she would be accessing the you uh, the resources to which he has the access now whenever you would be logging into office 365 basically on portal.office.com and you click on outlook if you would be having a necessary and important license that contains an exchange online plan one or an exchange online plan two which again are considered as service plans so if you would have these licenses yes you are going to see the basic hierarchy like inbox sent items your custom folders so you'd be able to see your emails you'd be able to view them you would be able to send those emails so for sending and receiving purpose we we purchase this subscription uh, that is exchange online plan one and plan two and user would require this in order to be able to log in to his mailbox so that he can send and receive emails okay now on the other hand what is a shared mailbox a shared mailbox is just a common mailbox which can be equivalently used either by one person dual person or say multiple person okay and why this this thing is taken into consideration so shared mailboxes are only meant to be used for sending emails or receiving emails however there would be no specific owner controlling it meaning if i've added anyone into full access permission so let's say if i've added five people so the owner of that shared mailbox would be five people why because they have the full access to those shared mailboxes and they'd be able to make any changes on these shared mailbox now a limitation to that is you would not be able to log into a shared mailbox directly why because the moment you create a shared mailbox within office 365 by default their sign-in goes disabled by default the sign-in is blocked for the shared mailboxes meaning shared mailboxes do not have the ability to create their own passwords however there are some shared mailboxes which goes above 50 gb and if you want to retain your data because shared mailboxes give you 50 gb of storage in free 
anything which goes above 50 GB, Microsoft does not guarantees you whether that data is going to stay intact or it is going to get deleted. And if it is going to get deleted, how it is going to get deleted, whether anything which is above 50 GB, it is going to get deleted or the complete 50 GB is going to get deleted. No such uh, things have been directly confirmed uh, and it is being shared on any public facing article. But yes, you need to be ensured that if your data has gone up, uh, above 50 GB, then it is a mandatory task for you to be able to assign a license to that mailbox. Not because you'd be able to log in with that shared mailbox, but just to retain your data so that it does not get deleted. For some bigger organization, we have seen in cases where people keep uh, assigning licenses to shared mailboxes also, provided they should be above 50 GB only. Otherwise, you know, it would just be you you wasting your license on a shared mailbox, which already gives you a 50 GB of a free storage container. Now, why shared mailbox? You would not be able to log in directly to a shared mailbox, either to through a webmail or through Outlook desktop client. If you have the necessary full access permissions, automatically it is going to get auto mapped with your primary mailbox and if you need to access this shared mailbox as a separate identity you need to be able to open this mailbox as a shared mailbox through webmail using a different web browser i'm sorry using a different tab so that your shared mailbox gets open and any email which would be sent from a shared mailbox let's say if you're trying to send an email from a shared mailbox so ideally the email would be sent from a shared mailbox the recipient would see that the email is actually received through to him and the address would be displayed of a shared mailbox but the challenge here is the sender side the sender the sender would see that the email uh, the, that sent item would be the email which should be there into the sent items would not be present into the shared mailbox it would be into the sent items of the delegate that is the person who actually send that email. Let's say if I have five owners or five ex, uh, people, delegates to the shared mailbox having full access and if user one has actually sent an email from shared mailbox, so I would not be seeing that email into the sent items of the shared mailbox, but it would be into the sent items of that user one, meaning user two, three, four, five would not be able to see that email into the shared item, into the shared mailboxes sent item. So they'll not be able to understand as if you know why these emails are coming through because uh, the re if you would be sending that email to the recipient and in case if the recipient replies so you would be able to all the five people would be able to see that email uh, because they are the uh, they have the full access for that so the four people would uh, get confused that you know no one tried to reply to him that how come this person is receiving I mean the sending email so to overcome that we can we can get it done that we should be uh, using this setting which says that whenever an email is sent using a shared mailbox so that sent item should always get displayed into the shared mailboxes sent items folder and not to the user or the delegates shared mailbox folder we'll be looking into that closely and shared mailboxes also support subfolders meaning unlike you can create custom folders into your outlook hierarchy for user mailbox like you can create custom folders with any of the random name which you would like to have you can get it created similarly on a shared mailbox as well and it should not be having or causing any issues for you and you would be easily able to send those emails or store those emails uh, using it on your custom folders within shared mailbox and you can also apply outlook rules on it okay so the main difference which goes up over here within the shared mailbox and a user mailbox is that the as i've told you shared mailbox is by default a disabled mailbox a disabled users so it would not be having the ability to be able to log on to that mailbox because it is accessed by multiple users and one single user can keep its own unique password but the others can keep theirs so that is the reason sign in is by default disabled for this mailbox and the most important reason for a user mailbox is that a user mailbox can also be acted as a shared mailbox if we assign the permission however this is not being recommended by microsoft if you are going to give a full access permission on a, any other user mailbox so that other person can access that person's mailbox as a shared mailbox but ideally it is not recommended okay it is not recommended for security concern and that is what the same thing which is being mentioned into point number two so if you need to share mailbox and share the data always keep a habit that you create a shared mailbox and access it globally
So this is all about shared mailboxes, their differences. If you have any queries on these points or getting it explained, feel, feel free to contact us and we would be more than happy enough to assist you on your questions. Now, to be able to check in as from where you can actually see the shared mailboxes. So see these, these are the shared mailboxes, okay? And if I am having an access to this shared mailbox, I'll show you how to access this shared mailbox. Okay, first of all, I'll show you this setting uh, in shared mailbox itself uh, if I need to access this using this. So this is the shared mailbox where um, you can click on teams and groups, shared mailbox. You would see that shared mailbox getting displayed here and there is a setting to it as if how you see not copied to a mailbox. I'll quickly show you what does this means. You see copy item sent as mailbox. now. Before I make the changes to this one, I'll quickly show you. So if you see in this is actually my sh my mailbox, my primary mailbox. This is my primary mailbox with email address this. Now if I need to access this shared mailbox, I can easily, easily get this added over here. I'll show you. Okay, this is my mailbox. Okay, so how to get this open? You need to click on open another mailbox. You need to click on the shared email address and you see shared one. So if it is shared one or shared, the address is shared. I can just get this uh, address copied so that I can just open. You see shared mailbox and a new tab would get open. And if I would be having all my proper permissions, I'll see that my shared mailbox would get open. Now how to confirm whether this is the shared mailbox or my mailbox. So my mailbox would just be having this URL. Okay, and because this is the way through which we open a shared mailbox in web mail. In Outlook, you usually get it attached within your hierarchy. And if you see in the address, you see after mail, it shows you the email address of the mailbox, which makes it clarified that yes, this is a shared mailbox. Second thing is, if you click on new message and if you click on show from, it is also going to show you the email address of the mailbox. Okay, so this is how the shared mailboxes gets accessed. And if I would be sending in anything, let me check if I have the send as permissions, because if I would not have the send as permissions, I would not be able to send email. I'll quickly show you. Let's say this is a shared mailbox. And if I'm clicking on other email address and I'm selecting this uh, email address and I'm trying to send this email, it is going to give me uh, an error. Let me share this to the shared mailbox itself. I'm sending an email from shared mailbox to a shared mailbox, but the address is Rizwan and I'm sharing this from a shared mailbox. Let me send this. I received it because the recipient in here was the recipient itself. So let me do this try now. Show from, it would be this address. It would be to Let me set to this candidate and check if that mail uh, has been delivered or not. I'll send this email. And remember, I am sending these emails. Okay, now if I check in at here, I would simply not be able to see these emails here. Why? because I have not selected these options. You see this copy items sent to the see the setting itself says what does these settings mean? If you don't copy sent items to this mailbox, they will only be saved to the sender sent items. Okay, I need to probably remove this permissions in order to be able to test you or uh, permanently with this because I if you see this shared mailbox, the only permission which this shared mailbox has is self permissions. So ideally, if I would be sending in an email, it is probably because my DNS is actually not being functional at this point. Uh, my domain is actually expired with this nori.12.com. If you would see under domains, you see possible service issues. Now, why possible service issues? Because I have not added these records, MX records, TXT records, and CNAME records. Even if I would be sending it internally, these things should not be taken into consideration. But at some times when we would be selecting with these options. So this is just for external purposes, not for internal purposes. But when I'm trying to send these emails, ideally, 
they are just going to get saved in over here and these these things work because i have made n number of changes with this one so if you would be adding these options under shared mailbox okay and if you click on set items and let's say if i would be allowing this so basically what this would do is this would also save a copy into the shared mailbox as well as a copy into the recipients i mean the senders the, the delegates mailbox and with this way you see it already shows me that yes from next time if you are going to save or send emails using a shared mailbox so one copy would be saved into the shared mailbox and the other copy would be getting in saved into the delegates mailbox as well this is how it all takes it would be taking in some propagation and after the propagation happens that mailbox that entry because right now you see i showed you my sent items and this was just being sent on the 18th of uh, january okay so that email does not contain this but if you would check this it shows me today today's entries because i've made this setting checked enable for now so if i would be sending it from a shared mailbox directly okay so it would be saving it into the sent items of the shared mailbox as well as on under my mailbox that is this okay i hope these this is clear to you and if you would be having an any query in regards with the permission with the access or with these settings here you can surely surely contact us and we'll, we'll get this doubt we'll get that doubt cleared for you okay this would be all from my side for this one i hope you are able to understand this concept and if there's anything which needs to be answered from our side feel free to contact us and we'd be more than happy enough to help you on this that is all from my side with this session and i'll be ending with this session thank you thank you so much for uh, listening to this video and you take care of yourself and you stay safe have a good day bye bye